what I personally believe is that they believe it's a fight, but uh, what it actually is is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for uh, them to look a little beyond the content that they're currently producing. It's an opportunity for them to look beyond, uh, like like Rajiv said, the people who are writing for the magazine. It's an opportunity for them to actually uh, be in the wave of the times and it's an opportunity for them to actually prove that they are thought leaders in the content that they're producing. Uh, in, in about the six years of experience that I've had, most people when you enter their offices are scared to get onto digital. Uh, they are scared because their product is not perfect, uh, but they don't realize that no, nobody's product is perfect. Uh, digital is a double-edged sword. It is going to make you or break you, uh, but I believe it's also your best chance of surviving. So uh, if it is a survival of the fittest, then this is a race that you really want to be running. So what I'm actually going to do is just very, very quickly going to run through why digital is important. Uh, we've got, like, like Ari said, about 205 million people plus on digital. Uh, 90 million of those people use the internet every day. Uh, I know for a fact that India is going to play New Zealand today, but that's not what I care at 3 p.m. What I actually want to know is what the score is. So if news is not relevant to me, it's not news anymore. Uh, so if 90 million Indians are using the internet every day, you have to be where they are, and they don't have to be where you are. Uh, and the mobile phone. It's, it's our biggest pain point at this particular point in time because uh, every day we have something new coming up. Um, every day there's a new opportunity to create a community and every day there's a new opportunity to have a conversation and the actual problem is to manage the conversation um, and like you like he said social media has become massive so whether it's 96 million people on Facebook and 33 million people on Twitter they have an opinion and and if they believe in their opinion they're going to go go all the way um, so why should magazines actually go digital I have about five reasons um, a lot of them, like I said, are in tune with what, uh, what Rajiv is saying. And uh, one thing that, that I believe is there is, like I said, convenience. I want to know when, when Sachin got out or I want to know why Virat Kohli did not make it to the team. Uh, so we lead a very, very hectic life. Uh, in Bombay alone, I know people who travel for three and four hours just to get to work. Uh, they're awfully bored while they're doing so. And they're usually resting on somebody else's arm to get to their work, workplace. If we're able to provide them content at the time at which we want them to read, uh, they might not actually do so. So the content needs to be available to them at whatever medium is available to them. Um, and the fact that they spend almost five hours a day, that's a lot of time for somebody to be uh, spending online. Second, uh, the third one is to get real-time feedback. And um, it's hard. Um, we, are, we are also the digital agency that works for Star Sports. I remember when they launched the five, uh, five channels that they had. Uh, they had almost three channels that were dedicated just to uh, just to cricket. And while the English Premier League had three live games going on, uh, they were still showing uh, victorious Virat and ravishing Ravindra. Uh, and what happened on Twitter uh, was astonishing. I remember the six, seven people who actually knew the brand and knew exactly what was happening uh, were, were working in shifts. I was doing the 2 to 4 a.m. shift because I anyways never sleep. And uh, my partner Harshil was doing the 4 to 6 shift because he says I anyways get up early. And we got about 20,000 tweets on complaints. Uh, now there was two ways to go about it and, and, and usually it's the, you know, the highway you just say we don't have to comment. Uh, but the idea that we actually acknowledged, uh, we actually responded to the problem and we actually learned what the pain points of the consumer was, not only helped the channel eventually understand that you know, um, cricket is not the end of the universe. There are people who are actually available out there who are watching other sports. Give them a great insight on uh, how active those communities were and how they were being foolish not activating those communities on social. Uh, and it also uh, restored the faith that people had in the channel and how happy they were when, you know, the EPL rights or the Spanish League rights actually came back to the channel. So if you would have ignored it, if you would have not done anything about it, this medium would have killed the channel. Uh, but the fact that the, the, the channel was actually listening, the channel was actually trying to take a proactive measure, uh, it helped them save their reputation in a certain way. So they, they were anyways going to go after them. What the channel did is what saved them today. Uh, 
and the same happens with with the magazines right uh, we post content that that makes sense to them they post content that doesn't make sense to them and here is one place where you know la, except for you know showing the first couple of pages and saying that this is exactly what readers had to say about our last issue they say it the second they see the content and you'd get brutal honest answers so one way is to believe that yes uh, my editorial content is phenomenal i don't i don't believe that he's the right target audience if we actually actually just put a you know a little bit of thought into what he's saying we might actually want to tailor the content for what they want to read as opposed to what we want to print um and that's 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 phenomenal especially with with big data coming in uh, it makes it a lot more easy for uh, for us to visualize what people are actually saying and therefore take actionable steps against it um and also and also the fact that you know there are initiatives like this that exist which allow allow you to believe that the adaption of digital is actually happening and people are not actually running away from it uh explore opportunities for advertising and tie ups so social media is the hardest thing to do because as opposed to any other thing we we're, we're writing at least at least about 1200 pieces of content a year uh, and three almost a day uh so for a brand to actually uh, to actually sustain itself on social media they need to be thinking what they're doing for the next 12 months maybe sometimes even the next 18 months and there are some brands that naturally don't lend themselves to that kind of content so if i have a a washing machine brand or if i have a brand that is actually uh, you know a washing powder um, they can talk about the new, new tvc for 15 days if they if they really want to stretch it for 30 days what do they do for the next 11 um that is where magazines like again and i'm and i'm coming back to femina that is where magazines like femina provide them even uh, channels on digital for them to actually do 15 30 45 day activities um, because the target audience exists on our platforms they are constantly communicating with us and they know for a fact that if there is a certain amount of reach that is actually applicable in the print version there is a certain amount of reach that is applicable to them in the digital version only difference being that in the digital space they are able to communicate with their audience and get real time feedback uh so it actually becomes an asset that you can go out talk to brands and monetize but it actually requires you to invest some money time effort and actually getting the entire pieces right um uh, and also the fact that there is massive co-creation opportunities possible not only with bloggers and with key influencers but also with non competing other digital partners so i mean we've done this hundreds of times where we've had like one tv channel you know uh tie up with with just another uh, with with another ngo or a tie up with a with a brand of restaurants and actually you know leverage both the communities to create enough noise for each other and uh, i mean we did this with pepper fry and good homes and uh, we did this whole diwali makeovers for uh, for people and it gives both the brands enough space to exist and uh, and allow for good content that users want to actually uh, you know take in and the ability to crowdsource content i think we've done this phenomenally with uh, with 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 femina and i'm actually going to take you through uh, this this entire piece that we did for them which is called the made by you magazine um, if i was to just you know summarize the problem statement in this case the the problem statement was that uh, a lot older women than what they actually expected on digital were consuming feminas content online and they wanted the magazine to become a lot more relevant to the younger audience